there comes a point where the things you use to distract yourself from life no longer become distractions. They become your life. And after 10 days in Zanti, I came home and I couldn't sink back into my life. I kept wanting to distract myself. I'd spend most of my day sitting watching Netflix, eating rubbish food, scrolling through social media aimlessly, tugging and repeating that cycle to the point where I was riddled with doubt, fear, shame and it just made me feel a little bit like this. Fatigued, I've got no energy, um, no clarity of mind, um, no sense of purpose. And it got to the point where a stranger actually came up to me in my car and gave me a note basically saying everything's going to be alright, you look like shit, but it'll be fine. And it was at that point I knew I had to do something drastic. So I decided to pull a complete 180 and go in the complete opposite direction. I was going to remove all pleasure from my life for a week. So I made a list of things that I can do and I can't do over the next seven days and I shared it with my community. And once Andrew Kirby, who's basically the goat of dopamine detoxing, replied saying he was impressed and he loved the idea, I knew it was a go. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how my journey went over the last week and how just seven days have had a profound impact on my mental health, my daily routines and just how I feel in general. So first, let me share with you the ground rules and I was very, very specific in these rules because I'm one who likes to bend rules and find loopholes and I will find ways to cheat the system in any way possible. So I was very strict in the rules, let me take you through them quickly. So the things that we're going to completely avoid, stimulating foods, sugar, seasoning, sauces, Netflix, YouTube, even for personal development, no YouTube. All social media, including school and Discord. No adult content, no tuggy tug tug, see above. No alcohol, drugs, nicotine, no music, no drinks other than water, no phone notifications, no digital content consumption at all, even personal development. No conversations in social media group chats like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. No meeting up with friends and no screens whilst eating. No, not even to do work. So with all that said, what are we allowed to do? We're allowed to do books, we're reading, journaling, physical exercise, laptops to do work, only the bare minimum essential paid work to financially sustain yourself, meditating, going on walks or swims outside, just outdoor nature stuff, go on bike rides if you want, and group sports if you're already committed. So these are the rules that I diligently abided by for a full seven day period. So it's the day before doing the dopamine detox and the goal today is to eat as much rubbish as is humanly possible. Got some buns here, got like bear food here, bear there. Gonna watch some Bernard Dorm on the telly. And the reason I wanna feel as bad as possible today so I can start breaking the association that things like pleasurable food and Netflix feel good and it will make it easier to jump into the dopamine detox tomorrow. And the next three days went pretty similarly to the first one. I'd wake up, I'd get breakfast, have a shower, go to work. I was feeling some benefits, mainly from just reducing the junk food I was eating. I had a bit more mental clarity, my meditations were deeper, I felt calmer. When I did my gratitude practice, I felt it in my heart, which is exactly what you want, that's the whole point of it. I also noticed me and my brother were keeping the house much cleaner than usual. The kitchen was in absolute spotless condition. I was also reading books on an evening and just chilling out, going for walks. Even though I was following all the rules of the detox, I didn't feel like I was detoxing just because I was working so hard. We were doing like nine, 10 hour days trying to get this app done. So I thought, where could I go to really get rid of all the distractions in my life and I thought there's only one place I could go to do that and that would be camping so I went camping by myself for three whole days and here's how it went in all honesty I was scared to be with myself for such a long period of time 
which is why I think I distracted myself throughout the week with work and not by myself as in to be by myself as in alone with no company but to be with myself, to be with my own thoughts, to spend time with the part of me that sits between my ears and just behind my eyes, make a noise all day that we call thoughts. And after getting set up, it really sunk in that I was truly with myself now. There was no phone service, there were no one I knew within an hour and a half car drive. There weren't even showers at the campsite. I washed in the ocean, went fishing for food and then cooked in my tent when I caught nothing. I spent the days wandering around and exploring in the evenings, gazing at sunsets and then eventually at the stars. I spent my days in a state of calmness that I've not experienced in a long time. And as Alan Watts said, Allow yourself to hear all the sounds that are going on around you. Just listen to the general hum and buzz of the world as if you were listening to music. So I did just that and it felt amazing. The noise box in my head, it stopped bringing up negative thoughts and instead it would bring me like positive insights that I could capture and like reflect on. And that's when a part of the book that I'd been reading over the seven day detox really sunk in. And I'm just gonna read the quote from the book. The key to mastering your negative emotions is to take them as feedback from the universe. Instead of labeling them as something bad, use them as a reminder that you are a spiritual being, veering off track from your purpose and fulfillment. And I feel many of us, instead of listening to these thoughts, try to escape them and bury the negative emotions through various mindless activities that we engage in, when in reality we should be listening to them and changing our behaviour based upon them. And just by doing this dopamine detox, lots of the painful emotions I was feeling have gone, almost as if the activities that I was using to escape the pain were actually causing it. My soul was telling me, no, this isn't the right path, stop. And I eventually listened with the dopamine detox and the pain went away, most of it anyway. And this allowed me to gain clarity on the next steps that I needed to take in my life. So if you're someone who lives in victim consciousness right now, which is where I was at the start of this journey, where you believe you're powerless to the world and that you're a victim to it. If you're ready to push that into the past and step into a level of consciousness where you are the creator of the life that you deserve, then I personally believe a dopamine detox is a great way to gain a bit of clarity on which direction you should take next. And with that said, I'll leave this video here. I hope it's been valuable to you and I'll see you next time.